In this video, I want to show you a few examples of how I use jQuery and a few custom developed JavaScript functions to provide circular draw with an easy to use user interface that allowed our clients to build, schedule, and maintain their own digital displays. I thought the best way to start would be to show you an example of the end result of what we wanted to achieve so you understand what we're trying to do during the demo. So here's an example of a circular draw screen in a hospital lobby. In this video, I want to demonstrate what can be done using jQuery and JavaScript while highlighting Circular Draw's new web-based cross-browser, cross-platform content management system. As you saw at the beginning of this video, Circular Draw is a network of dynamic displays. These screens need to be scheduled, managed, and monitored 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. We and our clients use this content management system to accomplish this. What I'm going to be showing you today is going to be the scheduling functionality of our software. And first, let's give you a high-level view of it. On the left-hand side, you'll see the toolbox. We use this to help manipulate the screen features. Next, we have the screen in the center. And this is what a screen would look like if nothing was scheduled on it. You'd have the circular draw logo with the maroon carbon fiber background. Then we have, on the right-hand side, the content area of the screen. And this content is specific to the client. So only the client, the client will only see the content that is theirs and no one else's even though all the content is held within the system. And then here at the bottom we have our high level details area. You'll see you're able to lay out and design a screen without ever going in here. However, this gives you a much higher degree of control over the system itself. So if you need to, you can go in here and make changes. So to start, the first thing we have is our pane. The concept of a pane. This is what uh, allows us to break the screen up into multiple areas and place content in that to schedule it to loop through uh, as the days go on. As you can see, a pane can be anywhere on the screen, and here we're able to drag it around the screen. If you notice, we are not able, to, however, to move it outside of the screen area. We are also able to resize a screen. We can make it, or a pane, we can make it higher or wider. We can do both at the same time. And since the majority of the screens nowadays are at 16 by 9 aspect ratio, a lot of the content that goes on the screen is at that ratio. So we wanted to help you uh, design it or lay it out that way, so we created this, the pane hold 16 by 9 aspect ratio. When you click that, you'll notice, even though I try to make it just higher, it will automatically make it wider to maintain a 16 by 9 aspect ratio. So if you have content that's now made for a high definition TV, such as a TV commercial, you'd be able to use that and put it right in here and it will automatically fit that size. All right, next, if you take a look at the screen that I showed you at the beginning of the demo, you'll see it's broken into its sections and these sections are the panes that I was referring to. However, it also has an image in the background that spans across these panes. So that would be this green area back here. The way we can get that in here is first you create that image and you import it into the system. Once you've done that, you can simply just take the image, drag it across, and drop it in this area that says drop screen background image here. And as soon as you do, you'll see it will resize it and automatically put it into the screen in the center of our content management system. Next, we just take our panes and fit them into the area that we want them in. So there's one. Now, if you notice, we have one, two, three more areas we need to put content in. So first we create the pane. So here we click to create a pane. And you'll notice you're asked, uh, what type of information would you like in this pane? We have different functionality on these screens, and we call these gadgets. Each gadget supports a functionality. So the Ad Promotion gadget does anything that has pictures or movies inside of it. The Weather gadget is pretty self-explanatory. It would show you the weather. And then we have an RSS gadget which allows you to scroll information. And as our gadget list grows, 
the options will show up in here. But let's right now just stick with Add Promotions. So I'll click Add Promotion, and you'll notice here's another pane. And I'll fit this pane into the area that I want it in. I'm going to want another pane. And if you notice when I do this, on the left-hand side, panes get added to the whole 16 by 9 aspect ratio. So I'll add another Add Promo. And that's going to go here. And in fact, I know all the ads going in this section are going to be coming from our TV spots, so this is going to be a 16 by 9 aspect ratio. So I'll just click that, and it will automatically size it, and I can just fit that in the center nicely. And then here in the alert pane, uh, I'll put another ad promo gadget, and I'll just size that accordingly. And there you go. Now we have all of our panes broken into the correct sections. So again, if we look at our screen here, you'll see here's our directory, our upcoming events, our alerts, and our ads. But, but I just realized the alerts area is actually not an ad. It's not a picture. This is actually an RSS feed. So now what I'm able to do is come in, and even though this pane is an ad promo pane, I'm able to delete this. And in fact, let me show you down here in our pane properties. Here are the four panes that I created. Here's the top, left, width, and height. So these are all the dimensions of the panes. And you'll notice here I want to change this pane 4 to an RSS feed. So when I delete this, this will disappear, and it will disappear from here as well. And then I'm going to come in and create a new pane, make it an RSS feed. And you'll notice it automatically added pane 4 again create a new pane 4 down here which is now in the upper left hand corner so it's 0 0 and now I'll move it into its proper location and you'll see the numbers will change automatically alright so now we have a majority of the screen already done we have the background set up and the panes broken into their areas now I want to schedule ads inside these areas to run and this is pretty simple now if you look down here in the pane content this is going to show you what's going to be scheduled inside the panes when they play. So here I can just drag the content over and put that there. And now you'll see pane 1 has content add ID 1, so add 1 is going to be playing there. And after add 1, I want add 2 to be displayed, so I'll drag add 2. Well, it's actually add 4, but it'll be the second add in the rotation. Then inside pane 2, I would like this add, so I'll drag it and drop it and now you'll see pane 2 has an ad playing in it and pane 3 I can just drag and drop this and now you get pane 3 as well so you can see this makes scheduling and laying out the screens very quick and very easy now here in the high detailed area you'll also see some other areas such as this this is a screen resolution so if you're making the background image and you want to know what the size of the screens are you have the uh, 1366 by 768 if the content was not here, so for example here I use this green background and you wanted another uh, background image, here you can uh, background image, choose a file, upload it into our system and then drag and drop it on and it will do it. Or if you didn't want an image and you wanted a solid color, here we have the different colors that you're able to set the background to. And if you notice we have quite a few of them. So that's the screen properties. The screen pane has the dimensions and the pane content. Then here we have scheduling a layout. What you're able to do, if you think about a facility, let's use a hospital or a college campus, for example, a large facility, you might have multiple screens across that campus. Uh, and you want to say, OK, well, here, I created this layout, and I want to put it on specific screens, not all the screens, specific ones. You're able to group them. So if you hear, see here, we have screen groups. We have hallway screens, lounge screens, classroom screens, or cafeteria screens. I could have this run in all of the hall screens simply by hitting this and submitting it. This will automatically get pushed out to every single screen that's in a hallway. Or if you want to target a specific screen, down here you have our individual screens. You can pick just the screen in the dorm's main lobby, or maybe just in the first floor lounge, or maybe you want to target just the lounge areas like that. Next, we're able to pick when we would like the ad to start, a specific day. And our system also allows you to have flight times. So you could have 
this ad rotation rotating only in the morning and then have something different in the afternoon. Uh, you can break it in the afternoon or evening. These flights are actually scheduled or set up by your facility. So you're able to break the day into as many parts as you like or as, many, or as few parts as you would like. And then we also have the upload new ad content. So if there were more ads that you would like it to show up in this content pane, you simply hit choose file, you'll scan your local computer and be able to upload uh, content into this area. So all of this functionality is, is built using jQuery and JavaScript functionality. Okay, now that I've shown you how the system works, I want to show you how this is cross-browser compatible. Uh, everything I showed you right here was in Chrome, Google Chrome. Now I opened it here in Internet Explorer as well, and you can see that it looks exactly the same. And what you're able to do is still has the same functionality, drag and drop, drag and drop the panes. Uh, we can move these around. Uh, we can still hold our 16 by 9 aspect ratios. You'll see the pane properties are still there. I can add and schedule. And then I also have it in Safari. So here in Safari, we can still have the same functionality. Again, if you notice, it looks exactly the same. It doesn't look any different. You still have functionality of resizing, dragging and dropping, creating new panes. And the pane properties are still updating as we move things. And we can still schedule content simply by dragging and dropping. And of course, since it's browsers, uh, it's in the browsers, and all these browsers are supported, you're able to use this on a PC or on a Mac, uh, even on a Linux system.